So today we're going to do a little demo on some techniques you can use to get like an aged plaster effect and also to portray a lot of lighting on walls. So I've got a basic little sketch drawing done here. Got a big window, um, sort of an orangey wall with like a yellowish uh, city light coming in is what we're going to work on, that nighttime glow, bright yellow. So first thing we're going to do is kind of get a bunch of colors out that are sort of in this, right? So we've uh, got whites, we've got yellows, we've got oranges, I've got a little bit of a peach, I like a green and a blue, and some different browns to mix in for my shadows. So this is my blending medium just to help me get stuff down, and real quick we're going to assign kind of a base color. This is the color I'm seeing come through in the windows. I'm not worrying about getting this super, super smooth because all these different layers with a little bit of like modeling, I'm not mixing my colors super well in the palette as I'm putting them down. That little bit of modeling is going to slowly show up and help us kind of create that plaster effect, that, that warped wall effect. So now to create our cast shadow color, I'm going to use a little bit of gray, a little bit of green and sort of a darker yellow, ochre-ish, brownish yellow. And once we get this mixed, sort of trace in our cast shadow. Now my underlayer is still wet, so these are gonna kind of blend together, but I can kind of block in where I'm gonna want these cast shadows to go very quickly. This first uh, layer does a lot of our heavy lifting for us, and I'm able to soften the edges of it, blend it in, because the yellow layer is still wet. I'm using a wide, flat, angled brush, which means I can tilt it up and use the point for smaller areas. I can go lengthways in order to make like a tiny cut in line, but it does a really nice job of blending. I like these, especially for doing a flat wall. A flat brush does a nice job of blending things out in a similar way. You can see we've already put a lot of dimension into the room. We've helped portray the depth, but it's still pretty low contrast and our lighting isn't too sure. For this time, I'm not gonna super focus on getting what's in the window correctly, but it will help us to have a sense of the lighting coming through it. So I am gonna block in a few of our colors there. I'm using a couple different oranges, some yellows, some whites to create some variation around the blinds that you can see kind of sketched in there, maybe. And then I'm going to use a deep, dark kind of gray mixed with brown to create our window framing. Part of the reason I like having this in, even though I'm going to end up painting over it and then having to repaint it at the end, is it does give me a sense of the depth of color. So having something really dark in there helps me know that I need to raise my shadows up to be closer to that. So my research image, the sill, is one of the darkest areas, but um, my shadows aren't that far off, so that sort of helps me set my, my value range. So now we're gonna start darkening our shadows, paying attention to how the light affects them. I'm using kind of a cool gray, green, brown with quite a bit of medium into it to work it in. If I need to blend it in, I'm using a clean brush, pinch, like pinch everything out of it so it's just a little damp and you can really feather out your edges. So you can sort of lay in color and then use pinch off your brush, clean it up and feather it in. You can see I laid a line and then use the flat of my brush to pull out from that line for this area. And then a small brush that fits it to keep it vertically and blend it. Pinching off and cleaning your brushes or coming back with just a little bit of just the clear medium or just a little bit of a damp brush is a great way to really blend stuff in. So there I was really choppy laying it down, but then I come in with a wet brush with a little bit of medium and I can redistribute it, smooth it out, make it look the way I want it to look. And then the wider, the flatter brush is going to be better at leaving less brush strokes than if I use a smaller brush. The smaller your brush, the more your brush strokes show.
generally speaking. There are times that's not true. So you can see we're starting to get some pretty nice heavy shadows. We're almost reaching the level of that window framing. Now I'm gonna come back in with some warmer colors for the bounced light that we're seeing coming through that window area. So I'm bringing back the yellows, softening the edges of some of these shadows, and warming everything back up. So it's constantly bouncing between your shadows and your highlights until they all kind of marry and make happy. So I haven't let anything dry between these layers yet and it is starting to get a little hard to work with. You can see stuff starting to get a little tacky, harder to blend, but that's kind of nice for laying down the sections I'm working on now. I like working wet and wet for things that are like modeled or for this kind of old plaster wobbly wall feeling. I think it works very well. So I'm gonna bring a brush in that's about the same size as the area I'm working with so that I can do a little bit more detail work on some of how these shadows come in. The bars are reflected and how the um, little, I don't know if it's a soffit that's in the corner works. And then while this is all still wet, I'm going to take white and just block in where some of those blinds are and know that it's not going to look pure white when it blends with all the other paint layers I've got. But it's nice to be able to bounce some of my highlights, some of my blinds, some of the areas where you'd see a little bit more light reflected on the sill, maybe on the edge of the soffit. Because areas that are white, if we get these in and nicely blended, will be easy for us to glaze over and pick up later. So this is white with a bit of water and a bit of medium, just sort of buffing it in. And then we're going to go ahead and let this dry. So it has dried, we're back, hey. So those whites, especially in the light um, cast on the wall are super bright, they wouldn't be white. So we're going to mix this very thin yellow that's transparent, it's got some water, got some medium in it, and use that to buff and like catch the whites and tone them. And then we're gonna tone all of our walls cause I think they got a little um, muddy on us. So I've got a little bit of an orangey color that I'm gonna tone my shadows through with. I'm still letting some of the green, some of the other stuff show through, but it's a nice way to unify it and to get rid of some brush strokes and also to once again continually soften where that shadow meets that cast light. So now I've got a little bit of a white medium again very thin, very clear, and I'm allowing it to sort of add some like chalkiness to the wall color. It's a little vibrant for us. So using that white to kind of block in and to clean up our wall color, make it more true to our local color. And to continually, um, you'll see me moving my brush kind of back and forth, flipping it, making X's and zigzags. That helps us to blend and also helps to create that sense of like the various wall textures. Plaster walls have a lot of like divots and soft areas. Now doing that kind of wash also sort of soften things. So once again, going through and bumping back out our highlights. This is a little bit of a pinkish cast with some white and yellow in it so that we can warm those areas up, give our color some dimension so it's not all one tone. Go 
going back in and bringing those bars of shadows that we get from the blinds back into it and making sure that we're darkening the folds around the soffit. Now you can see here I'm laying in pretty thick lines of paint and then going ahead I'm going to get a dry soft round brush and sort of buff them into the paint that's behind it to soften the edges of it. It's a very effective way to lay down like a, a quick shadow. And using that soft dry effect to also do the shadows around the soffit. Um, so you can see we were really starting to get a pretty good sense of the three-dimensionality of it. I'm going to make a little bit of a glaze with that bright yellow and a little bit of white to cast some directional lines to show the way the light is falling in from that window. Brighten that and soften the edges of our shadow where it translates. Add our highlights back into the tiny any side wall of our soffit and buff in any brush marks back out. Go back in with our dark color. Like I said, I'm going to have to repaint that uh, window framing anyway, but this works nicely because once again, we're making it nice and dark. And then carrying that exact same color over and doing a few detail shadows to really define how that space is working. Sometimes I just dip my finger in water and use that to move things around because you get less brush strokes or to blot out brush strokes with the, the pad of my finger. Add in a couple highlights for us. So we're strengthening our darkest darks and our brightest highlights. Widening the range of our values and contrast. You can see all those different layers, the way they've all stacked up and there's lots of modeling and we're really focusing on the light, but we're not really smoothing everything out. We're not making it hyper, hyper flat and smooth and color blocked. Um, that helps with the effect of the age on the walls. It helps tell you that the light is probably more, you know, it's not a source that's directly behind the window, casting a perfect rectangle. Using a dark floor color to help define those edges and add crispness to our perspective. I'm doing the same with the top, but usually ceilings aren't really, really dark. So I'm gonna add in a shadow color and then blend it to white on the board. So you can kind of see what that looks like. It's another effect you could take. You could lay down all the shadow colors for the walls and then add in the light colors instead. I went the opposite. I laid down the light and then added in the shadows. Sort of dealer's preference on that. I find I bounce back and forth so much between both of them anyway that they end up being sort of like worked up at the same time. So which color you lay down as your base tone is kind of up to you. You can't see it whole lot of our base tone anymore anyway. So we've got a nice sort of sense of the light. The walls have that soft feeling to them. I'm going to add some of that shading that we've got in the corners around the soffits also into up here to help carry it out. And there we have it. I hope that that helps.